Thank you for joining me on this very first episode of The Dictionary. What you are listening to at this very moment is actually being recorded in October, so about 10 months after the this first episode was originally aired. Um, I am adding this on to the beginning because I've noticed uh, my first episode gets a lot of downloads, but it seems like a lot of people just sort of drop off after that point. I totally understand this podcast idea is absolutely not for everybody. Uh, So if you are one of those people, feel free to listen and stop and never join me again. But if you don't proceed to episode two um, because of the quality of the episode that you are about to hear, um, and actually the next couple episodes as well, uh, please give it a shot. Go past episode three. Keep on chugging along. I sort of get better. I do get better as time goes on. I learn the dictionary. I learn it gets smoother. Absolutely. So stick with it for a while. And without further ado, here is episode one. Hello, and welcome to the first episode of The Dictionary. That is literally what I will be reading to you. Number one, A, plural, A apostrophe S, or AS, often capitalized. Number one, A, the the first letter of the English alphabet. Also, B, a graphic representation of this letter. C, a speech counterpart of orthographic a in italics. 2. The sixth tone of a C major scale. 3. A graphic device for reproducing the letter A. 4. One designated A in italics, especially as the first in order or class. 5. A. A grade rating a student's work as superior in quality. 5. B. One graded or rated with an A capital. 6. Something shaped like the letter A, capital. This is repetitive. Seven, capital. The one of the four ABO blood groups characterized by the presence of antigens designated by the letter, capital A, and by the presence of antibodies against the antigens present in the capital B blood group. I believe that is all for the first entry. Second entry, also A. Number one, used as a function word before singular nouns when the referent is unspecified. A man overboard. You could also say a man overboard. Totally personal preference. And before number collectives and some numbers, like a dozen, a dozen. Two, The same, birds of a feather, swords all of a length. 3A, wow, we're saying the the word A a lot. 3A, used as a function word before a singular noun followed by a restrictive modifier. A man who was here yesterday. 3B, any, a man who is sick, what? A man who is sick can't work. Ah, now I understand it. A man who is sick can't work. 3C. Used as a function word before a mass noun to denote a particular type or instance. A bronze made in ancient times. 3D. Used as a function word before a proper noun representing an example or type. The attractions of a Boston or a Cleveland. 3E. Used as a function word before a proper noun to indicate limited knowledge about the referent, as in, a Mr. Smith called to inquire about the job. 3F. Used as a function word before a proper noun to distinguish the condition of the referent form, a usual, a referent, referent from, let's do that again, 3F. Used as a function word before a proper noun to distinguish the condition of the referent from a usual, former, or hypothetical condition, as in, a triumphant Ms. Jones greeted her supporters. 4. Used as a function word with nouns to form adverbial phrases of quantity, amount, or degree, as in, felt a bit tired. Usage. In speech and writing, A 
is used before a consonant sound, as in a door, a human. Before a vowel sound, an is usual, as in an icicle, an honor. But especially in speech, a is used occasionally, more often in some dialects than in others, as in a apple, a hour, a obligation. Sounds weird to me. Before a consonant sound represented by a vowel letter, a is usual, as in a one, spelled o n e, a union. But an also occurs, though less frequently, now than formerly, as in an unique, such, such an one. Also, sounds very strange to me. Before unstressed or weakly stressed syllables with initial h, both a and n are used in writing, as in a historic, an historic. In the King James version of the Old Testament, and occasionally in writing and speech, an is used before h in a stressed syllable, as in an huntress, an hundred. Children are an heritage of the Lord.、Uh, I believe that is saying that's that's in Psalm one twenty seven three. I am not familiar. Well, that was about five or six minutes. I think that's enough for this for this first、uh, episode. And just looking down, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, eleven more entries of just the letter A in various forms. Thank you. Hello, word nerds. This is episode two of the dictionary. This is、uh, entry number three for the letter A. Lots of things I can't read. One, chiefly dial, on, in, at. Number two, in, to, or for each, as in twice a week. Okay. Four, a. This is the fourth entry. Archaic, have, as in, I might have had husbands afore now, from John Bunyan. That is definitely archaic in my book. Next entry of the letter A, of, often attached to the preceding word, as in kinda or lotta, l o t t a. I say those things a lot. Sixth entry of the letter A, abbreviation for absent, acceleration, acre, adult. Alto, anode, answer, ante, a n t e, not your uncle and your auntie, anterior, r a r e, area, ato, which is a t t o dash, which I'm guessing is the shortened version of attorney, and author.、Uh, next entry for a, this is a dash or a hyphen, and there's a couple of those. This one is、uh, number one, on, in, at, as in abed, a b e d. Two, in such a state or condition, as in a fire. Three, in such a manner, as in allowed. Four, in the act or process of, as in gone a hunting, or a tingle. Hoo hoo. Second entry of a dash or a hyphen. Not without, as in asexual. It is telling you that you use a before consonants other than h and sometimes even before h. You would use an a n before vowels and usually before h. As in achromatic. Or A historical, or an an astig astigmatic. So there's the word astigmatic, and we're adding a n. And then last example is anhydrous. 
So the next entry for A is dash A dash. So I'm guessing this is going to be in the middle of something. Replacing carbon, especially in a ring. The example is AZA dash. So that, uh, I'm guessing, is the beginning of some uh, scientific term, as in chemistry. Uh, the next entry is the opposite of the previous ones. This is dash A. So this would be uh, as in magnesia, um, oxide, silica. That's the example, silica. Next entry for A is a capital A. This is abbreviation for words like ace, adenine, or ampere, A-M-P-E-R-E. -E. Uh, next entry is, uh, it's not an abbreviation, but it is a symbol for argon. Next one is another abbreviation. I don't know why it couldn't have been put with the other ones, but this is kind of why I'm reading the dictionary, because I'm learning stuff. Uh, it is an abbreviation for angstrom unit. By the way, if you uh, have any comments or uh, corrections or just information that you would like to explain to me, you can email me at dictionarypod at gmail.com. Entirely creative, I know. Uh, next entry is... A, A, double A, both, uh, both lowercase. The abbrevi abbreviation for Anna, A-N-A. -A. I'm guessing we'll come across that word in the future. Next entry is another A, A, but this is capital, both capitalized. It's an abbreviation for words such as Administrative Assistant, Alcoholics Anonymous, Anti-Aircraft, associate in arts, and author's alterations. Well, I think that's enough for episode two. See you next week when we move on to, you guessed it, more of the letter A. Hello, everybody. This is episode three of the dictionary. Let's see, where did we leave off? I believe we left off at uh, triple A, all caps. This is an abbreviation for the uh, blah, blah, what? An abbreviation for the American Academy of Arts and Letters. No, sorry, I skipped ahead. Triple A is an abbreviation for one. Agricultural Adjustment Administration, or number two, American Automobile Association. Next entry is A-A-A-L. That's the one I started to read. Abbreviation for the American Academy of Arts and Letters. Next entry is A-A-A-S, all caps. Abbreviation for the American Association for the Advancement of Science. They are very important, and we need more of them. Uh, next entry is A-A-C, all caps. Uh, it says it's a noun, advanced audio coding, 1997, a high-quality, standardized computer file format for lossy compression and storage of digital audio data. Weird, because that is literally what I'm doing right now, although I'm not recording to AAC, I don't think. Uh, next is AAFP, all caps, abbreviation for the American Academy of Family Physicians. Good people, those doctors. Next entry is AAH. No caps in this one. Also, AH. Often prolonged and or following. Oh, that's part of the pronunciation. I'm not going to deal with the pronunciation uh, letters and things if you haven't figured that out yet. Uh, it says 19, uh, no, 1843, to exclaim in amazement, joy or surprise, ooing and eyeing at the fireworks. Ah. Next one is AAMC, all caps. This is an abbreviation for the Association of American Medical Colleges. Next is A and M. Uh, a is capitalized, M is capitalized. Abbreviation for one, agricultural and mechanical, or number two, ancient and modern. Next entry is A and R. Um, 
A is capitalized, R is capitalized. This is an abbreviation for artists and repertory or artists and repertoire. Next is AAR, all caps, abbreviation for against all risks. All these abbreviations are making me wonder if I'm going to see something like LOL in here. I don't know. Next entry is a real, real, real word. Aardvark. Noun. Uh, let's see. Da, da, da. Where's the actual definition? Um, saying it's like an earth pig. Oh, it's coming from the African for earth, which is ard and vark, which is pig, from 1822. That is pretty fascinating. Earth pig. Um, a large burrowing nocturnal mammal. Ooh, they have the scientific name in here. Arcteropus afer. I don't know if I pronounced that correctly. Uh, of sub-Saharan Africa that has a long snout, extensible tongue, powerful claws, large ears, and heavy tail and feeds especially on termites and ants. Aardvark. Next is aardwolf. I believe I've heard of an aardwolf before. Uh, let's see, also I think it's saying African uh, from ard and wolf. Obvious, not sure if wolf means something different to them. 1833, a maned striped nocturnal mammal uh, of southern and eastern Africa that resembles the related hyenas and feeds chiefly on insects and especially termites. And they have a little picture, uh, a little drawing of what an ard wolf looks like. It does look like a hyena. Uh, and the scientific name is Protellus cristatus. Protellus cristatus. Next entry is Aaron. This is the name Aaron with two A's. Uh, from the Hebrew, Acharon. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that correctly. Before 12 C, I'm wondering if that's 12 uh, BC? We don't use BC anymore. AC? I don't know. Long time ago. A brother of Moses and high priest of the Hebrews. Next entry is Aaronic. So it's the word, the name, Aaron, with I-C at the end. An adjective from about 1821. One of or stemming from Aaron, the name. Number two, of or relating to the lower order of the Mormon priesthood. I don't know anything about Mormons, so this is news to me. Next entry is AARP, all caps, abbreviation for the American Association of Retired Persons. Fun fact, I started getting letters from them when I was me in my early 20s. I was definitely not retired. Next entry, AAS, all caps, abbreviation for Associate in Applied Science. Next entry, clearly I'm not numbering these entries. That would be ridiculous. AASCU, all caps, abbreviation for the American Association of State Colleges and Universities. Next is AAU, all caps, abbreviation for Amateur Athletic Union. We have another abbreviation, all caps, AAUP, American Association of University Professors. Yet again, another abbreviation, AAUW, or also we could say triple W, American Association of University Women. Next abbreviation, AAVE, African American Vernacular English. I am fascinated by what that is. I will have to look that up. This is future Spencer jumping in here. So I did look this up. Uh, AAVE, African American Vernacular English, is colloquially known as Ebonics, uh, which, as Wikipedia points out, is a controversial term. Uh, so if you don't know what that is, go ahead and look it up. Uh, now back to your regularly scheduled podcast, listening to me talk a little bit more. Ready, set, go. Next entry is AB, just ab. Noun, around 1956, an abdominal muscle, usually used in the plural, like I have flabby abs. Uh, next entry is the same word, ab, AB, but this one is an abbreviation for the word about. Next entry is also a, 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 ab, 
uh, but the A is capitalized. So this is uh, a noun uh, from, I'm thinking that says Hebrew, around 1771, the 11th month of the civil year of the fifth month of the ecclesiastical year in the Jewish calendar. It says see month table. So there's a whole table of months. The 11th month of the civil year, oh, I'm sorry, let me restate that. The 11th month of the civil year or the fifth month of the ecclesiastical year in the Jewish calendar. I think I read that wrong before. Next entry is a B, all caps, noun uh, from around 1927. The one of the four ABO blood groups characterized by the presence of antigens designated by the letters A and B and by the absence of antibodies against these antigens. I think that is the second entry we've had about blood. Uh, next one is again a B, all caps. This is an abbreviation for one. Able seamen, like a person who is on the water in a boat, or able-bodied seamen. Number two, airborne. Number three, airman basic. Number four, Alberta. I believe that is the uh, territory, province in Canada. Uh, number five, ah, this is a, a Latin term, Artrium baccalaureus. I think I'm reading that correct. Correct? Or no, Artium baccalaureus, uh, which is a Bachelor of Arts. Uh, last entry for this episode is AB dash, which is a prefix. Uh, ba -ba -ba. Skipping over some stuff. B -b -b from, away, off, as in abaxial. That is it for episode three. Thank you for listening, word nerds, which I am starting to become one myself. Thank you and good night. Hello, people who want to listen to me talk about the dictionary. Here we are, episode four. Let's get right into it. First entry is ABBA, A-B-A. -A. Uh, this is a noun from around 1811. Number one, a loose sleeveless outer garment worn as traditional dress by men in the Middle East. Number two, a fabric woven from the hair of camels or goats. And I'm guessing that uh, that number one entry is probably a fabric woven from the hair of camels or goats. Next entry. ABBA, all caps. This is an abbreviation for a number of things. Number one, the Amateur Boxing Association. Number two, American Bankers Association. Number three, American Bar Association. That's not where you go to get drunk. That is for lawyers. Number four, American Booksellers Association. Next entry is, I'm thinking it's pronounced ABACA. Um, I believe that is correct. Noun from around 1805. Uh, looks like Spanish, abaca, with an accent on the, uh, the last letter. Um, number one, a strong fiber obtained from the leaf stalk of a banana. Native to the Philippines, also called Manila hemp. And the scientific name for, I guess, banana is Musa textilis, because that's it's right after the banana. Or maybe it's the scientific term for abaca. I'm not sure. Uh, but number two for abaca is the plant that yields abaca. You know, sometimes I really hate entries like that, but I guess that's necessary. Next entry is abac, an adverb from very long time ago. It says before 12C, which uh, there was another one that said the same thing. Number one, archaic, means backward or back. Entry number two, uh, in a position to catch the wind upon the forward surface, as of a sail. Number three, by surprise, unawares, as in, was taken aback by her sharp retort. Next entry is abacterial, or abacterial, depending on how you want to say it. Adjective 1888 not caused by or characterized by the presence of bacteria. Abacterial, uh, this is as in, abacterial protestitis, I believe is what it says. Next entry is abacus. I thought abaca would be the singular of abacus, but that was a dumb thought. 
Abacus is just a thing. Uh, noun, plural, is abacai, or I believe it's a hard C there. Uh, or abacuses, depending on your personal preference. They're both in here, which means they're both correct. Uh, number one, an instrument for performing calculations by sliding counters along rods or in grooves. And number two is a slab that forms the uppermost member or division of the capital of a column. I have always wondered how abacai work. Uh, that is something that I think I'm going to need to look into. Clearly, I don't need it. Uh, in my day-to-day -day life. I have a calculator, but I think it would be really good to learn um, something that... I was going to use the word basic, but I don't think it's basic. I think it's just uh, it's just an ancient uh, way for uh, doing math. So I think that would be a good thing to learn. Next entry, a baft. A-B-A-F-T, an adverb. Toward, toward, however you want to say that. Toward or at the stern. Aft. So it's another term for aft, I guess. All right, next entry. Another abaft. Uh, preposition from 1594. I'm guessing that's the earliest known time that these words were used. To the rear of, specifically toward the stern from. So away from the front and toward the back. Abaft. Next entry. Abalone. I believe this is actually abalone. Uh, this is a noun. It says uh, American Indian language of Monterey Bay. I'm not sure what all those things mean. 1850. Any of a genus, Haliotis, of edible rock-clinging gastropod mollusks that have a flattened shell, slightly spiral in form, lined with mother-of-pearl and with a row of apertures along its outer edge. I thought that this was some sort of uh, sea creature, because uh, I believe I've heard people talk about it in that context, but I never really knew what it was. Next word, abandon. Skipping all the things, let's see, uh, to hand over, put in someone's control. Okay, entry number one, A, to give up to the control or influence of another person or agent. 1B, to give up with the intent of never again claiming a right or interest in, like abandoned property. Entry number two, to withdraw from often in the face of danger or encroachment, abandon ship. Number three, to withdraw protection, support, or help. I'm skipping lines. To withdraw protection, support, or help from, as in he abandoned his family. He abandoned his family. Number four, to give oneself over unrestrainedly. Entry number five, A. To cease for maintaining, practicing, or using. I have to turn the page in the middle of this, as in abandoned their native language. Five B. To cease intending or attempting to perform, as in abandoned the escape. Uh, you could also use the word abandoner, or a, uh, which is a noun, or abandonment. Uh, synonyms, abandoned, desert, forsake, mean to leave without intending to return. Abandon suggests that the thing or person left may be helpless without protection, as in abandoned children. Desert, nope, desert. Hey, future Spencer here. Um, the word is D-E-S-E-R-T, and normally that would be desert, but in this context, I believe it is actually desert, as in a deserter. And now back to past, Spencer. Desert, nope, desert, implies that the object left may be weakened, weakened, but not destroyed by one's absence, as in a deserted town. Forsake suggests an action more likely to bring impoverishment or bereavement to that which is forsaken than its exposure to physical dangers, as in a forsaken lover. And then it says, synonym, see, in addition, relinquish. All right, we'll do a couple of more. Abandon, another one. Noun, 1822. A thorough yielding to natural impulses, especially 
I think that's what that abbreviation means. Enthusiasm, exuberance, as in with reckless abandon. And I believe this will be the last one for this episode. Abandoned, with the ed at the end. Adjective, number one, wholly free from restraint. And holy is W-H-O-L-L-Y. And number two is given up or forsaken. Well, I think that'll do it for episode number four. Thank you for listening. If you've made it this far, thank you and goodbye. Hello and welcome to the next episode of The Dictionary. I'm not going to say what number it is because I don't want to confuse myself, but I'm pretty sure this is five. Moving on, I'm going to move my little paper clip here, which saves my place in this giant book. Um, All right, let's get right into it. Next entry is, I don't know how to pronounce this. I think it's uh, ABBA or it's A space B-A-S. Sorry for the pause and the confusion. The uh, first A has an accent on it. I think... I'm guessing this is French or something, Uh, circa 1897, means down with, uh, as in, abba the profiteers. Again, sorry, I do not know how to pronounce this. I'm I'm not uh, very well familiar with the uh, pronunciation symbols. Maybe I'll have to figure that one out later. Next entry, a base. A lot of information I can't really make out. Number one, archaic, to lower physically. Number two, to lower in rank, office, prestige, or esteem. Abasement is another form. Next entry, abash. To destroy the self-possession or self-confidence of. Disconcert. Synonym says see embarrass. Abashment. Is another form. Next entry, abate. I believe this is a bird, a, bu- a bird, a verb, abated, abating. Number one, a, to put an end to, as in abate a nuisance. One b, nullify, as in abate a writ, w r i t. Two a, to reduce in degree or intensity, moderate as in, may abate their rancor to win peace. To be, to reduce in value or amount, make less, especially by way of relief, as in, abate a tax. Three, deduct omit, as in, abate part of the price. Four a, to beat down or cut away so as to leave a figure in relief. Four b, Blunt. I think this is telling me that that is an obsolete uh, form of it. Five. Deprive. Why is there another one after the five? This is so confusing. This is why I'm reading the dictionary, because I'm learning things. Or I'm just confused by things. I'm not learning anything. Uh, The one after the five says, To decrease in force or intensity. To A. To become defeated or become null or void. To be. To decrease in amount or value. Abater is a noun version. Uh, List some synonyms. Abate, subside, wane. EBB mean to die down in force or intensity. Abate stresses the idea of progressive diminishing, as in the storm abated. Subside implies the ceasing of turbulence or agitation, as in the protests subsided after a few days. Wane suggests the fading or weakening of something good or impressive, as in waning enthusiasm. I don't know why I said E-B-B before, that is clearly the word ebb. Ebb suggests the receding of something as the tide, uh, that commonly comes and goes, as in the ebbing of daylight. Another synonym, C in addition, decrease. Next entry, abatement. Noun, number one, the act or process of abating, the state of being abated. Two, an amount abated, especially a deduction from the full amount of a tax. Next entry, abatus or abatus. 
Uh, noun, plural, is the same word, or abatises, or abatises. Again, not sure where the, uh, the uh, emphasis goes. From 1766, a defensive obstacle formed by felled trees with sharpened branches facing the enemy. Next entry, abattoir, abattoir, however you want to say it. Looks like it's French from 1820, slaughterhouse. That's what it says. Didn't know an abattoir was a slaughterhouse. Next entry, abaxial. Adjective, 1857, situated out of or directed away from the axis, as in the abaxial or lower surface of a leaf. Next entry, abaya, noun, 1836, a loose-fitting, full-length robe worn by some Muslim women. Next entry, abbasy, noun, Plural is abysses. I'm not being very consistent with some of those descriptions. I will try to be better. The office, dignity, jurisdiction, or tenure of an abbot. A-B-B-O-T. Next entry. Abbasid, with a capital A at the beginning. Noun, 1788. A member of a dynasty of caliphs. Um, it's giving me some years, I believe, 750 to 1258, ruling the Islamic Empire, especially from their capital, uh, Baghdad, and claiming descent from Abbas, A-B-B-A-S, the uncle of Muhammad. Next entry, Abatiel, nope, uh, Abishel, Abishel, I think that's what it's uh, telling me is how it's pronounced. Adjective, circa 1642. Of or relating to an abbot. Abbess, abbess, or abbey. Next entry. Abbe. Ab Abbe, yeah. Noun. It looks like it's French, 1530. A member of the French secular clergy in major or minor orders. Used as a title. Next is abbess. Noun. A woman who is the superior of a convent of nuns. I don't know a ton about religion, so a lot of these, uh, this is why I'm not super familiar with them. Next entry, Abavillian? Abavillian, I think that's how it's pronounced. Capital A-B-B-E-V-I-L-L-I-A-N. Adjective, around 1934 of or relating to an early lower paleolithic culture of Europe characterized by bifacial stone hand axes. Abvillian. Next is Abbey, A-B-B-E-Y. A noun. 1A, a monastery ruled by an abbot. 1B, a convent ruled by an abscess, abbess, abbess. Two, an abbey church. I believe that is uh, good for today. See you later. Hello, welcome to the next episode. I believe we left off with abbey, so let's get right into the next one. Probably should have tagged this on to the last episode, but uh, oh well, I didn't. Abbot, a noun, the superior of a monastery for men. So previously we had, uh, I believe it was abess, A-B-B-E-S-S, -S, and now we have abbot. Uh, abess was uh, for nuns, abbot is for men. Next entry is A-B-B-R, and it is telling me that it is an abbreviation by putting the letters A-B-B-R for the word abbreviation. So it's abbreviation, abbreviation, abbreviation. It's a three-word line. Next entry, abbreviate, to make briefer, especially to reduce to a shorter form intended to stand for the whole. Synonym, C, shorten. Uh, noun version is abbreviator. Next entry, abbreviation. Noun, one, the act or result of abbreviating. Abridgment. Two, a shortened form of a written word or phrase used in place of the whole, as in 
AMT is an abbreviation for amount. Next entry, it's the letters ABC, all caps. Noun, plural is ABCs. One, the alphabet, usually used in plural. Two, A, the rudiments of reading, writing, and spelling, usually used in plural again. Two, B, the rudiments of a subject, usually used in plural. Next entry, ABC again, all caps, abbreviation. One, American Bowling Congress. Why is it a Congress? Are there senators and reps? I don't know. Two, American Broadcasting Companies. Number three, Australian Broadcasting Corporation. Next entry, ABCD, all caps, an abbreviation. Accelerated Business Collection and Delivery. Next entry is ABD, lowercase, or ABDOM, which is abbreviation for abdomen or abdominal. Next entry, ABD, all caps. This is not an abbreviation. It is from around 1965, a doctoral candidate who has completed required courses and examinations, but not a dissertation. Next is abdius, with a capital A at the beginning. Noun, it means Obadiah. Uh, looks like it's Greek. I don't know anything about what I just read. Next entry, abdicate, a verb. One, to cast off, discard. Two, to relinquish as sovereign power formally. To renounce a throne, high office, dignity, or function. Other forms are uh, abdic. This goes over this next line, so it's a little hard to read. Abdicable. I think that means you are able to be abdicated. Uh, abdication. Adjective. Noun. Abdicator. Uh, synonyms. Let's see. Abdicate. Renounce. Resign. Mean to give up a position with no possibility of resuming it. Abdicate implies a giving up of sovereign power or sometimes an evading of responsibility such as that of a parent, as in abdicated the throne. Renounce may replace it, but often implies additionally a sacrifice for a greater end, as in renounced her inheritance by marrying a commoner. Resign applies to the giving up of an unexpired office or trust, as in resigned from the board. Next entry, if, if, if anybody is wondering, this is the right column of page two. Yes, we are on page two. Abdomen, this is a noun from 1543. One, the part of the body between the thorax and the pelvis. Also, the cavity of this part of the trunk containing the chief viscera. Two, the posterior section of the body behind the thorax in an arthropod. See insect illustration. Abdominal, uh, adjective, oh, that would be the adjective abdominally, adverb. And I think I screwed up my uh, other forms of abdicate. I think uh, abdicable is the adjective, abdication is the noun, and abdicator is also a noun. Next entry is abducens nerve, abducens nerve. Noun, 1947, either of the sixth pair of cranial nerves that are motor nerves supplying the rectus on the outer and lateral side of each eye, also called abdescens, without the word nerve at the end. Next is abdescent nerve. I'm guessing this is similar from, not noun, from 1875. It just says abdescens nerve. So uh, you can, it's abdescens or abducent. Next is abduct, 1825, one, to seize and take away as a person by force, two, to draw or spread away as a limb or the fingers from position near to parallel to the median axis of the body or from the axis of a limb. So is that like if you give a high five, you're abducting your fingers? I don't know. Uh, abductor is a noun, 
That would be the person doing the abducting. Uh, next entry is abductee, noun, 1975. A person who has been abducted. I am surprised that 19, it's as recent as 1975. Next is abduction, a noun, 1666. One, the action of abducting, the condition of being abducted. Two, the unlawful carrying away of a woman for marriage or intercourse. I don't know why men couldn't be part of an abduction, but typically, obviously, in the world we live in, it's usually a woman. Also, this word is claiming 1666, yet the word abductee is 1975. That, uh, I don't know, to me that doesn't quite add up. But there's probably some history there. Next entry, a beam. A B E A M. Adjective or adverb, circa 1836. Off to the side of a ship or plane, especially at a right angle to the middle of the ship or plane's length. Next entry, absidarian. A noun. 1603. One learning the rudiments of something as the alphabet. Absidarian. And if you're curious how it is spelled, it is A-B-E-C-E-D-A-R-I-A-N. And the next entry is the same word. Uh, it, it looks like it's the adjective version of it, 1665. Uh, 1A, of or relating to the alphabet. 1B, alphabetically arranged. Uh, 2, rudimentary. I love to alphabetize things. Uh, if it's movies or music or whatever, if things are not alphabetical, it kind of bugs me. Like if I go to somebody's house and their movies are not alphabetical, I cannot understand it. That's just the kind of brain I have. So, this is a good word for me to learn. Absidarian. And I think I'm pronouncing this correctly. Let's see. Maybe it's, oh, wait a minute. It's ABC Darian. ABC Darian. I think that's how it's pronounced. I'm looking at the uh, pronunciation symbols. If, uh, if I've got this wrong, let me know. I could probably also look it up and hear an electronic voice uh, speak it to me. ABC Darian. Interesting. Next entry a bed. A B E D. Adverb or adjective means in bed. Next is able, capital A, B E L. Noun, looks like Greek and Hebrew before 12C. A son of Adam and Eve killed by his brother Cain. I remember at least a couple of uh, proper names in here so far, and I'm curious what their criteria is for choosing which names actually get put in the dictionary, because you can't put them all. I guess we'll find out. Next is Abelia, or Abelia. Uh, noun, circa 1899. Any of a genus, Abelia, of Asian or Mexican shrubs of the honeysuckle family, having opposite leaves and white, red, or pink flowers. And there is a little uh, black and white drawing to the right. And uh, so because it's black and white, I don't get to see the wonderful colors. Next is Abelian, 1847. Commutative. Uh, I believe it's saying as in Abelian group or Abelian ring. I'm not sure what this is telling me. Next, Abenaki or Abenaki. Abenaki, I believe that's correct. Uh, noun, around 1721. One, a member of a group of American Indian peoples or northern New England and adjoining parts of Quebec. Two, either of the two Algonquin languages spoken by the Abenaki peoples. And we'll do one more for today. Aberdeen Angus, both uh, with a capital A. Noun, uh, counties in Scotland, 1862, and it says Angus. Well, that's it for this episode. I will uh, not see you or hear you for the next one, but you will hear me for the next episode. Thank you. 
Hello, and welcome to the next episode of The Dictionary, read by me. First entry for this episode is aberrant. Aberrant adjective. Circa 1780. One, strain from the right or normal way. Two, deviating from the usual or natural type. Atypical. Aberrance is a noun. Aberrancy, another noun, and aberrantly, adverb. Another version of aberrant, noun, 1938. One, an aberrant group, individual, or structure. Two, a person whose behavior departs substantially from the standard. Next is aberrated, adjective, 1893. Aberrant. So I guess it's uh, one who has been doing the aberranting. Next is aberration. Noun, 1594. One, the fact or an instance of being aberrant, especially from a moral standard or normal state. Two, failure of a mirror refracting surface or lens to produce exact point-to-point correspondence between an object and its image. Number three, unsoundness or disorder of the mind. Four, a small periodic change of the apparent position in celestial bodies due to the combined effect of the motion of light and the motion of the observer. Five, an aberrant individual. Uh, An adjective is aberrational. Next is abet. One, to actively second and encourage as an activity or plan. Two, to assist or support in the achievement of a purpose. Synonym C, incite. Abetment, noun, abetor, or abetter, with an O-R or an E-R, are also nouns. That's uh, the one who is doing the abetting. Next entry, abeyance. A-B-E-Y-A-N-C-E, a noun. 1640, one, a lapse in succession during which there is no person in whom a title is vested. Two, temporary inactivity, suspension. Abeyant, abeyant is the adjective form. Abhor, A-B-H-O-R. To regard with extreme repugnance, loathe. Synonym C, hate. Abhorrer is a noun, A-B-H-O-R-R-E-R. Next entry is abhorrence. 1660, noun, 1A, the act or state of abhorring. B, 1B, the feeling of one who abhors. 2, one that is abhorred. Next is abhorrent, adjective, 1A, archaic, strongly opposed, 1B, feeling or showing abhorrence, 2, not agreeable, contrary, as in a notion abhorrent to their philosophy, 3, being so repugnant as to stir up positive antagonism, as in acts abhorrent to every right-minded person. Abhorrently is the adverb. Next is abib, A-B-I-B with a capital A. Noun, 1530, the first month of the ancient Hebrew calendar corresponding to Nisan. Nisan, not sure how to pronounce that one, N-I-S-A-N. See month table. Next is abidance, A-B-I-D-A-N-C-E. Noun, 1647, one, an act or state of abiding. Maybe it's pronounced abidance. I think that sounds more correct. Uh, continuance. Next entry is, I believe it's pronounced abidance. Noun, 1647. One, an act or state of abiding. Continuance. Continuance, yep. Uh, two, compliance, as in the ab- abidance by the rules. Next entry, abide, A-B-I-D-E. If you're a Coen Brothers fan, 
you know this word, or even if you're not a Coen Brothers fan. One, to wait for, await. Two, A, to endure without yielding, withstand. One, uh, two, B, to bear patiently, tolerate, as in cannot abide such bigots. Three, to accept without objection, as in will abide your decision. Uh, another form of it, one, to remain stable or fixed in a state. Two, to continue in a place, sojourn. Synonym, see bear, B-E-A-R, and continue. Abider is the noun. And another uh, version of this, abide by. One, to conform to, as in abide by the rules. Two, to acquiesce in as in will abide by your decision. Next entry, the bottom of page two, is abiding, adjective, enduring, continuing, as in an abiding interest in nature. The adverb is abidingly. And since we ended the page, that's probably a good place to end. Thank you. Until next time, this is Spencer reading the dictionary. Fascinating. Hello, welcome to another episode of The Dictionary. Next entry, top of page three. Abigail. This is uh, not a capital A, so it's not technically the name. 1671, a lady's personal maid. And uh, at the beginning of uh, many of these words, there is uh, a description um, after the pronunciation description, there's a description of kind of, w I guess, where it came from, um, which I really skip over most of the time. I'll try and read some of them. But uh, this one says, uh, by the way, the reason I skip over a lot of them is because there's a lot of abbreviations and things that I'm not familiar with, but um, I will try to be. But this one says, uh, Abigail, with a capital A in italics, a servant in The Scornful Lady a play by Francis Beaumont and John Fletcher. That was from 1671. Next entry, ability, noun. And again, uh, a lot of uh, abbreviations and things that I am uh, not quite familiar with, but I think it's saying it's French. Um, 1A, the quality or state of being able, as in ability of soil to hold water especially physical, mental, or legal power to perform. 1b, competence in doing, skill. 2, natural aptitude or required proficiency, as in students with different abilities. Another form um, of ability is, uh, there's a dash in front of it, which is uh, making me think it's, also, it's a, uh, yes, a suffix. Um, you can also spell it ability with an I at the beginning instead of an A. And this one says capacity, fitness, or tendency to act or be acted on in a specified way, as in, oh, this is an interesting word, agglutinability, A-G-G-L-U-T-I-N, dash, ability. Next entry, looks like it's uh, two words, ab Initio. Is that pronounced correctly? Ab init. Initio. Oh, initio. Initio. Ab initio. Uh, A B space I N I T I O. Adjective 1599. From the beginning. Next entry. Abiogenesis. Noun. From around 1870. The origin of life from non living matter as. A, spontaneous generation, or B, a theory in the evolution of early life on Earth, organic molecules and subsequent simple life forms originated from inorganic substances. A noun version of this is abiogenist. abiogenist. Next is abiogenic. This is the adjective, 1874, not produced by the action of living organisms. Adverb is abiogenically. Next is abiological. 
adjective, 1868, not biological, especially not involving or produced by organisms, as in a biological synthesis of amino acids. Next is abiotic, or possibly abiotic, adjective, 1870, not biotic. I think earlier in the dictionary we learned that uh, a dash as a prefix kind of means um, something is the opposite of. Uh, abiological, the, as in the abiotic environment or abiotic environment. Abiotically is the adverb. Next is abject with an a at the beginning, not object. Adjective, one sunk to or existing in a low state or condition, as in, to lowest pitch of abject fortune, thou art fallen. That is a line from John Milton. 2a, cast down in spirit, servile, spiritless, as in, a man made abject by suffering. 2b, showing hopelessness or resignation, as in, abject surrender. 3. Expressing or offered in a humble and often ingratiating spirit, as in abject flattery, or an object, an abject apology. Uh, synonyms, see mean, M-E-A-N. Abjectly, adverb, abjectness, noun. Next is abjection, a B J E C T I O N. Noun 1. A low or downcast state. Degradation. 2. The act of making abject. Humbling. Rejection. By the way, uh, many of these uh, definitions have uh, one or two words at the end of it. So in that case, it would have been uh, humbling and rejection. Those are the words at the end. Those are um, in all. Uh, small caps, um, and I think those are, um, I believe those are the synonyms. Um, I will have to sort of read the description of the beginning of the dictionary to find out what exactly those words are, but yeah, I think those are synonyms. Uh, so whenever you hear a, a word or two words tagged on to the end of the definition, that's what that is. Um, so this is um, abjection, second, uh, second definition of it, as in I protest this vile abjection uh, of youth to age. And that is from G.B. Shaw. Next entry, abjuration. Noun, one, the act or process of abjuring. Two, an oath of abjuring. And that's A-B-J-U-R-I-N-G. And funny enough, that is our next word, abjure. Uh, abjured, abjuring, 1a, to renounce upon oath, 1b, to reject solemnly, 2, to abstain from, avoid, as in abjure extravagance, abjurer is uh, the noun, that reminds me of the rural juror, if you know what that is, you will probably find that funny. Synonyms are uh, abjure, renounce, forswear, recant, retract, mean to withdraw one's word or professed belief. Synonyms are abjure, renounce, forswear, recant, retract, mean to withdraw one's word or professed belief. Abjure implies a firm rejecting or abandoning often made under oath, as in abjured the errors of his former faith. Renounce may carry the meaning of disclaim or disown, as in renounced abstract art and turn to portrait painting. Forswear may add an implication of perjury or betrayal, as in I cannot forswear my principles. Recant stresses the withdrawing or denying of something professed or taught, as in if they recant, they will be spared. Retract applies to the withdrawing of a promise, an offer, or an accusation, as in the newspaper had to retract the story. So at the bottom of some of these definitions, there are uh, synonyms, and uh, it 
restates the the word that we're we're looking at, and then it gives you a few, a few more, and then it describes uh, what each of those words are and kind of why they're synonyms for the word. So for this one, we've got uh, oh, and it lists them first before it uh, describes them. So in this one, we've got renounce, forswear, recant, and retract. Mean to withdraw one's word or professed belief. And we'll end with one more today. This is uh, A B L lowercase. It is an abbreviation for ablative. And I believe we'll probably read that word in the next episode. Thanks for listening. Talk to you later. Hello, word nerds. Welcome to another episode. Um, By the way, if you don't like the term word nerds, which I think I'll just keep on using, uh, feel free to email me at dictionarypod at gmail.com. If you want to ask me any other questions or give me any other comments or whatever, you can uh, use that email or you can also use uh, Twitter at dictionarypod. All right, first entry today is ablate, A-B-L-A-T-E. This is about 1542, to remove or destroy, especially by cutting, abrading, or evaporating, to become ablated, especially vaporize, it says. Next entry, ablation, a noun, the process of ablating, Uh, A, surgical removal, or B, loss of a part as ice cream nope not ice cream that would be pretty awesome as ice from a glacier or the outside of a nose cone i really do wish glaciers made ice cream uh, by melting or vaporization next uh next couple of entries are similar uh ablative adjective around 1500 of relating to or constituting a grammatical case expressing typically the relations of separation and source, and also frequently such relations as cause or instrument. Uh, Next version of ablative, adjective around 1569. One, of or relating to ablation. Two, tending to ablate, as in ablative material on a nose cone. Ablatively is the adverb. Next is ablative absolute, noun from 1631, a construction in Latin in which a noun or pronoun and its adjunct, both in the ablative case, form together an adverbial phrase expressing generally the time, cause, or an attendant circumstance of an action. I'm really not quite sure what I read, but that sounds pretty interesting. An ablative absolute. Next is ablaut, A-B-L-A-U-T, a a noun from 1838, a systematic variation of vowels in the same root or affix uh, or in related roots or affixes, especially in the Indo-European languages, that is usually paralleled by differences in use or meaning as in sing, sang, sung, song. Next is ablaze, adjective or adverb around 1676. One, being on fire. You do not want to ever have to say, I am ablaze. And if you are, stop, drop, and roll immediately. Immediately. Two, radiant with light or emotion as in, his face all ablaze with excitement. That is a line from Bram Stoker. Next entry, able, A-B-L-E. Adjective is abler or ablest. 1A, having sufficient power, skill, or resources to accomplish an object. 1B, susceptible to action or treatment. 2 marked by intelligence, knowledge, skill, or competence. Ably, A-B-L-Y, is the adverb. Next entry is dash able, so this is a suffix, also uh, dash I-B-L-E, 
One, capable of, fit for, or worthy of, being so acted upon or toward. Chiefly in adjectives derived, deri- blip, blip, derived from verbs, as in breakable, collectible. Two, tending, given, or liable to, as in agreeable, perishable. Next entry, able-bodied. There's a dash in between the two words. Uh, Adjective from about 1600, having a sound, strong body. Next is able-bodied semen, S-E-A-M-A-N. I have to point that out to some of you. You know who you are. Uh, Noun from about 1708, it just says able semen. So a person on a boat on the water who is able to be doing something with their body. Next entry, abled, with a D at the end. Adjective from about 1946, capable of unimpaired function, as in designed to be helpful to the less abled. It says compare differently abled. Next is ableism, A-B-L-E-I-S-M, a noun from about 1981, Discrimination or prejudice against individuals with disabilities. There was a great uh, drunk history episode where uh, they finally, I think it was when they got the uh, American Disabilities Act, uh, something like that. That was a, that was a good one. Next entry, able semen. We saw this before with able-bodied semen, a noun from 1657, an experienced deck department semen qualified to perform routine duties of sea. So that is a much better description than the previous one. Next entry, a bloom, A-B-L-O-O-M, adjective from about 1729, abounding with blooms. Next entry, a bluted. A-B-L-U-T-E-D, adjective from about 1650, washed clean, that is the entire definition. So if something is washed clean, it has been abluted. My socks are not abluted. Next entry, ablution, A-B-L-U-T-I-O-N, 1A, the washing of one's body or part of it, as in a religious rite. 1b, plural, the act or action of bathing. 2, plural, I think this is telling me it's British, it says B-R-I-T, a building, housing, bathing, that's a weird phrase, a building, housing, bathing, and toilet facilities on a military base, military base, on a military, military base, on a military base. Ablution is a building, or uh, plural, ablutions, a building, housing, bathing, and toilet facilities on a military base. Okay. And uh, we're at the bottom of the first column of page three. I get through about a quarter of a page with each of these episodes, so I think with that we are going to finish this episode. Thank you and goodbye, word nerds. Hello, hello, hello. Spencer here with another episode. Uh, Again, just a reminder, dictionarypod at gmail.com or on Twitter at dictionarypod. If you want to contact me in any form, you probably don't, but go ahead, do it. All right, first entry for today is ABM, all capital, Um, a noun from about 1963. It means anti-ballistic missile. Uh, So you can say uh, uh, the plural is ABMs. Uh, Some of you with your head in the gutter might be thinking of something else. Maybe I'll delete that part. Maybe I won't. We'll find out later. Next entry, ABN, uh, all lowercase. So this is an abbreviation for the word airborne. So if there's a virus in the air or something... Uh, you could say it's Abin. No, that would be stupid. That's for it's just for writing. Abbreviation is for writing. Next entry, Abnaki, capital A B N A K I. Uh, it says a variance of Abenaki, A B E N A K I, which I think I may have read earlier. 
Next entry, abnegate. Abnegate. I think I'm reading that correctly. From about 1543, one, deny, renounce. I think those are synonyms, uh, as in abnegated their god. Two, Surrender, relinquish, also synonyms, uh, as in abnegated her powers. Uh, a noun would be, the noun version would be abnegator. Kind of like an alligator, but with denying and renouncing something. I deny and renounce your alligator, so I am an abnegator. I don't know, that doesn't make any sense. Moving on, abnegation, I think this is probably related. Uh... It means denial, or especially self-denial. Next entry, abnormal, adjective. 1817, deviating from the normal or average. Uh, synonyms are unusual, exceptional, as in abnormal behavior. Abnormally is the adverb. Uh, but really, what is normal or average? I don't really think there is. Next entry, another form of abnormal. Noun from 1857, an abnormal person. So I guess you could just say uh, that person is, they, could, they can be abnormal uh, as an adjective or they can be called an abnormal. Next is abnormality. 1847, one, something abnormal. Two, the quality or state of being abnormal. Next is abnormal psychology, a noun from 1888, a branch of psychology concerned with mental and emotional disorders, as neuroses, psychoses, and mental retardation, and with certain incompletely, incompletely understood normal phenomena as dreams and hypnosis. Next is abo, A-B-O. It's a noun from 1908. Austral, A-U-S-T-R-A-L, austral, often disparaging. Synonym is aborigine, aborigine, but I don't know if I say the E at the end. Uh, this seems to be um, obviously related to uh, aborigine people, native people. It seems like specifically to the Australia, uh, Australia, maybe even New Zealand region. I have been to Australia. Um, if you ever get to the Melbourne area, or as we Americans say, Melbourne, uh, there is a very cool area. I think it's called the William Ricketts Sanctuary, maybe uh, an hour or two outside of Melbourne. Um, it's a it's a beautiful um, kind of a, kind of a national park. Walk through the forests, and this guy William Ricketts created all of these sculptures that uh, fit beautifully with the nature there. I think I counted. 50 to 100 different sculptures. If you ever get to that area, definitely check it out. It's, it's really cool. Moving on with the dictionary. Next entry, aboard, A-B-O-A-R-D. Uh, adverb or adjective, one, alongside, two, A, on, onto, or within a vehicle, as a car or ship, to B, in or into a group, association, or organization, as in her second promotion since coming aboard. Whenever we have a new employee at the job I work at, I often say, glad to have you aboard, which is such a cliche thing to say, but it's true. Uh, three, baseball. Uh, in baseball, it's on base. So when somebody's on base, you'd say aboard. Uh, another form of aboard, preposition. Uh, synonyms are on, onto, within as in go aboard ship or aboard a plane. Next entry, this is related to a couple that I remember from earlier episodes, ABO blood group. That's capital A, capital B, capital O. Uh, noun from about 1949, any of the four blood groups A, B, AB, and O comprising the ABO system. Do you know what your blood type is? If not, you might want to go get that checked out and donate some blood while you're at it. Next is abode, A-B-O-D-E. A noun, one, uh, looks like the obsolete version is wait or delay. 
Two, a temporary stay. Sojourn. Three, the place where one abides. Home. Next entry, a boil, A-B-O-I-L. Adjective or adverb from 1810. One, being at the boiling point. Well, the synonym is boiling. Number two, intensely excited or stirred up, as in the meeting was a boil with controversy. Next is abolish. One, to end the observance or effect of. Synonym is annul, A-N-N-U-L, as in abolish a law or abolish slavery. I am very happy that America has abolished slavery, but unfortunately it still exists in many parts of the world. So whatever we can do to um, finish abolishing all slavery would be great. Thanks. Uh, Number two, destroy. That's the synonym for that one. Abolishable uh, is an adjective. Abolisher is a noun. Abolishment, another noun. Next is abolition, a noun from 1529. One, the act of of abolishing, the state of being abolished. Two, the abolishing of slavery. Abolitionary, uh, it says that that is the adjective, but I thought that would be a noun. Abolitionary. These words start to sound very strange the more you read them. Uh, We've got one more related to this. Abolitionism, noun from 1807. Principles or measures fostering abolition, especially of slavery. Abolitionist. See, that's the noun that I was thinking of. uh, Or adjective. And uh, next one, I think it'll be the last one for this episode. Um, Let's see if I can pronounce this. Abomasum? Abomasum. I think that's correct. A B O. M-A-S-U-M, a uh, noun from 1678, the fourth compartment of the ruminant stomach, and I lost my place, the ruminant stomach that follows the omasum and has a true digestive function. Compare to two words, uh, maybe synonyms, rumen or reticulum, and the adjective is abomasal. I think that's how it's pronounced. Uh, So maybe we'll get to the word omasum in the uh, later episode, a much, much later episode, and I'll learn a little bit more about this. But it is the fourth compartment of the ruminant stomach that follows the omasum. Oh, and earlier in the definition, it says something about ox's tripe. So it's from an ox. Anyway, that's it for this episode. Thank you for listening. And I'll talk to you next time.